Welcome guys to the Christian Podcast 101 and I hope that you appreciate, I hope that you enjoyed the last episode but today I'm joined with my lovely guest. Let's introduce the guest. Hello, I'm James. Thanks even for bringing me again. It's all right. Hi, I'm Eunice. Hi, my name is Jose. Thank you guys for joining me. So today's topic I want to talk to you guys about is relationship. So the topic today is about is being in a relationship worth it in the 21st century? Because a lot of us get into relationships and we don't know why we're in that relationship and what we're going to get out of it. So the first question I want to ask you guys is that is being in a relationship like, do you guys feel like if you're in a relationship here, that is worth it? In a sense where like, like, do you think it's beneficial to develop yourself like now? Or do you feel like you, you, we can just, if we're going to relate right now, we'll basically have a, we'll basically have, enjoy ourselves, if that makes sense. I think it's quite subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like putting an age on the fact that you should get in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like um, God has ordained relationship. God wants us to have a relationship. If we read the Bible, um, the Trinity is a relationship that God has. Mm-hmm. So the relationship is where the covenant is made of marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I think it's, um, it's due to one's own discernment mm-hmm. if you should get into a relationship. I would say in today's 21st century, we see all, all over social media about yeah. relationships, yeah, get into a relationship. When you go on your TL on Twitter, it's like, oh, it must be nice. Mm. Oh, let me get into a relationship. Mm. So I think one needs to question themselves when getting into a relationship. What is the purpose of the relationship? Mm. Yeah. And not just get into it because of the society pressures. Mm. That's so true. That that true. true. Mm-hmm. That's so true. That's very true. Yeah. Um, I would say a relationship, Like I feel like, yeah, it's important and whatnot. I feel like it's needed as well. Mm. But I also feel like singleness is needed as yeah, well. I feel yeah. like when you, when you when you're single, like you have time to reflect, you have time to mm. focus on God. Yeah. And like when you focus on God, it's like, let's say for a boy, your girl is not your priority because mm. you're not with a girl. Yeah. Say for a girl, your boy is not a priority because yeah. you're not with a boy. Mm. So it's like God's your only main priority yeah. in a way. Yeah, that makes sense. And it also like takes out other distractions because mm. your partner could take up your time, to cutting your eating off your quiet time mm. your whatever your time with god yeah. and whatnot and you can just take your focus off god a bit but i do think like relationships are like they are in this day and age yeah they're mm. still like very important because mm. at the end of the day you're meant to be fruitful and multiply true. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Okay. yeah i think relationships are important i think um just need to study yourself look at yourself i agree with the singleness if if you don't understand your singleness, you won't understand what you need mm-hmm. that other mm-hmm. person to bring you. So mm. that's so true. Word, word, word. Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't, if you don't like study yourself and like let God guide you, it's, it's all about intention. You know mm. why yeah. you get in a relationship. You know, mm-hmm. like um, as a Christian, there's certain things you know you yeah that you can't do's, really do's and don'ts and whatnot. We all know. So it's just about intention, about like study yourself, your singleness, like. The, the beauty about the relationship, like I'm talking about the Trinity, is how they complement each other, yeah. how they fill yeah. each other's gaps. You know? mm. Can you fill each other's gaps? Like, mm. that's the best thing about relationship. Like, you were, like, even between you and God, like, the way you'd have that personal uniqueness mm. between yourself and then together, like, yeah. each, each other mm. by yourselves and then together, are you able to complement each other? Mm, true. Yeah. yeah. But with me personally, I feel like, yes, relationships are important but i feel like the first thing that you need to do is basically develop yourself in other words like you need to find yourself first before you find someone else because yeah. if you don't find yourself first you're gonna go into relationship like no know, knowing what to do because like because if you read in the bible yeah um in, in genesis when god created adam yeah he was alone like he hadn't eve wasn't created and god gave adam specific instructions on what he should do and so i feel like when when you're by yourself yeah, god can speak to you better if that makes sense, because mm-hmm. he, he you're able to um, see God in a different way because you, you, there's no more distractions. Like, like in a relationship, it's time. Like, there's a lot of time that you have to invest. And if you if you, if you take that um, time and you invest into the, your personal relationship with God, then it'll flourish. That's the same thing that Adam did. Like, Adam really didn't like did it. Didn't even know that um she um he needed Eve. Like until God said that you need a woman. So that just shows yeah, that yeah. Adam was so busy with the thing that God created him to do that he, God had to tell Adam that Adam like you need a woman. So that's I feel like true. if you want to go into a relationship here, yeah, firstly, spend time with God because that's the key thing that you need to do. And af- after, yeah, um, then God will basically bring you the right person. When you're working, like, you need to have a job because majority, like, we need to have a job because if you have a job, then you can basically find, like, you can basically um, uh, provide. provide for yourself. 
Mm-hmm. And you can also provide for the other person because if you're not working, how are you meant to provide for the for the for your partner? And so I feel like job is key because Adam had a job, and that's what we basically need to do. That we need to spend time with God, and once we spend time with God, He will direct us to the right person. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. The I think Sorry. to mm-hmm. add to what you're saying mm. about Adam, um, mm. I think relationship and purpose go hand in hand. Mm. So, like you were saying, Adam had a purpose before he had a person. Mm. Um, mm. So, I think mm. a lot of people want to get into relationship, but you can't get into relationship without understanding your purpose. It's so, true. if we read in like Eve's narrative, mm-hmm. God gave Eve as a helper. Yeah to Adam's purpose mm. and his purpose was to steward. So the mm. relationship should be adding to your purpose, not mm. taken away. So it's kind of linked to the idea that it shouldn't take time away from God. Mm. It should bring you closer to your mm. ordained purpose you. in God. That's so true. true. That true. actually yeah. reminds me of the verse. I'm not really sure where, mm. but it says, he who finds a wife finds That's a good, good thing. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so Eve was a good thing to Adam mm-hmm. because she was a helper. Mm. So I feel like when... You, as a boy, when you find um, your significant other, mm-hmm. you should see a good thing. Mm-hmm. This person's my helper. This, in every single aspect of my life, mm-hmm. whether it looks like it has nothing to do with her, mm-hmm. she should still be a helper, if you know okay. what I mean, because you do things together. Okay, yeah. that makes so much I was sense. Saying, you, need to, you need to find someone who's there to help you fulfill your purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. therefore. The purpose that God gave Adam, God said, you need a helper to fulfill that purpose. That's mm-hmm. true. That's true. true. So yeah, then, well, the second question I want to ask you guys is that... Um, do you feel like, like well, you know, in our generation, yeah, do you feel like we rush into relationships? Do you feel like, because we see social media, like, oh, this celebrity is doing this, this celebrity is doing that, yeah. Do you think our generation rushes into a relationship or do you feel like our generation takes time and observes the person and then goes into a relationship? Does that make sense? What do you think the majority do? I think the majority mm. rush into relationships, but... To be honest, I don't blame them because even the scripture, my people perish with lack of knowledge. Mm. When we get into a relationship, we don't understand the knowledge on why we get into the relationship. Mm. Because usually I would say like sometimes what the church has failed to do in the past is talk about relationships. Mm. It's kind of they just give you don't have sex before marriage, yeah. but they don't mm. really give you, OK, why you shouldn't or why That's you shouldn't true. get into mm. a relationship. So it's the fact that we're letting society define our values oh, yeah. and that's why a lot of people see the social media and they see um the will and the jada and the entanglement mm. etc and we want that kind of relationship <laughs> we want the relationship to go on date nights and do x y and z mm. so i think is the fact that we haven't been taught why a relationship is important mm. and that's what we're lacking the bridge between why people are rushing into relationship okay. without understanding why you should actually be in a relationship okay mm. okay yeah i agree with the um I think that when we get to like certain ages, certain times in life, and mm. then there's a lot of pressures sometimes, mm. like with parents and yeah, yeah, true. Know, and that also affects sometimes your decision making because mm, sometimes you be like, okay, I need to rush because A, B, and C is rushing me, mm, or because mm. this person's doing this. I want to do that as well. Yeah, it's just about I think it's just about just settling down and just having good timing mm. you know? i think you could also rush because of the desire of lust you know yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because i feel like once you have that desire of lust it's a thing where it's like oh i need to get someone mm. so i can lust with yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean and then the only thing that's in that relationship mm. is your lust yeah and you two um whatever fornicating and whatnot mm. but obviously like that's not how a relationship yeah. should be yeah but it's mad because paul even said in corinthians like if you're burning with lust, just go and get yeah, married. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then the yeah, thing that he yeah, says, go and get married, marriage is a big deal. Mm, yeah. And the fact that he says, if you're burning with lust, go and get married, mm-hmm. it means a lot because, it says a lot because it's like, sexual mar- immorality mm. outside marriage. of marriage is very damaging. Mm, very. That like, to avoid it, just go and get married. It's better for you to get married than to have sex before marriage. Mm. I, okay, I want to ask you a question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> based, on what you said, based on what you said that year, what are the damages things when you have sex before marriage? Like, can you give us example if you have one? <laughs> All right, cool. I'll say, for example, um, the notion of soul ties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where your spirits get attached and let's say, can I use this now? Yeah, example? yeah, go on, go on, use me. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just use me. And right, let's say like you're being a Solomon mm. and you have like three girls yeah. that you've, you know, done your thing yeah, with. Have, yeah. And let's say, <laughs> yeah, God forbid, God forbid. <laughs> you're, you're a man of God in it. He's not, he's not like that, mm. by the way. So don't, let's say one of those three girls, yeah. Mm. Let's say both of them were virgins until mm. you. Mm. And then one of those three girls um, was actually a harlot. Okay. And a prostitute, basically. Yeah. yeah. And she carried spirits of those however many boys. Mm, that she, she has sex with, yeah. You're going to also carry 
them spirits combined oh, as well okay. with hers when you have intercourse yes, with yeah. her. So it's very damaging in, uh, spiritually because now you're going to have things that weren't there, like oh, things okay. that are not of God, okay. like certain spirits. Maybe like you're mm. angry now. Maybe like you have even more of a desire yes, to last. Yeah. Maybe it's harder for you to develop your relationship with God. Maybe you're questioning God. Maybe you're departing from mm. God. It's all these like little things that add up which are not for God and don't draw oh, you anywhere okay. near. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah, and I was watching, um, there was one video of a gospel minister who was talking about mm -hmm. his time before he got married. Okay. Mm -hmm. About how he had like five different like ladies and they all had five different things he liked about them. Mm -hmm. So he used them in that sense. Like, but then what happened was because they all had just one attribute, mm -hmm. he expected his wife when he later married okay, to have that to have all five, five of those attributes, attributes oh. in, one. in one person. So what he did is he actually ended up like, it became a very huge burden on the wife. And he was saying like, wow. like that's why it's very dangerous to like indulge in those, that, that kind of sexual yeah. immorality before you get married because mm. you can end mm. up carrying something. That you didn't even know that you had. That, yeah, you just thought you was having fun or mm. whatever. You end up carrying it into your marriage or mm. carrying it into your relationship. And then- It just, just basically ruins it basically. I think a biblical example is David. So after mm. he sinned with Bathsheba, if you read it, um, the scriptures properly, you will see that he ha his curse went onto his children yeah. and it didn't yeah. affect you. So I think as well with the whole idea with like soul ties and stuff, it might not affect you exp um, you as a person, mm -hmm. but you never know what you're doing with the generational curses. Yeah. So just, I would say, be mindful. You might not see in your life, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be passed mm. out in future generations. Yeah, so true. I think it's just better to, well, it is anyway, just mm. hold your steam until yeah. marriage. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> just basically hold your home. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But me personally, I just feel like um, the reason why I feel like majority of our um, our generation rush into relationships is because because of social media, what of, what they see in other people's relationship. For example, if they see a person like any celebrity that they see that they're taking pictures, like they're having a good time, they feel like that relationship is a good thing, but they don't know what's going behind closed doors, like what is actually being manifested when we don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so, if we base our uh, our image on those things, yeah, then we won't. Um, see what God has for us because we like we would always want to do what they're doing or to have the same experience they experience it. But majority of the time yeah, they're not really experiencing anything that is good because like they are not how do I say this? They're not really having um that just pro they're sorry, there's just problems going on like mm -hmm. that we don't know. So when we basically focus on ourselves and focus on God yeah, that creates a um a, that creates something sorry, that creates more, that creates purpose for us because we know that once we serve um, the living God, he will bring the right people into our lives. And mm -hmm. we, I feel like we just need to stop idolizing celebrities and people that we see on um, Instagram or Twitter because once we start um, idolizing them, then we want this, the relationship that we're in right now or the person that we're, we're basically going to relationship to, to function the, just the, the way they are, if that makes sense. And I feel like our generation just needs to like basically hold yourself and also like, like trust in God, that God's timing and God's um, will is will come that we shouldn't rush into if that makes sense so yeah i also just want to add i feel like um even if you haven't held yourself it's not too late mm. you're a new creation and god because we can sit here and condemn but we're not so just to put it out there that god can still make you brand new he said behold i'm I doing mean, a new yeah, thing yeah, yeah. you're a new creation in christ so regardless of your mistakes if you pray he's a just god to mm. forgive you there just putting that available. out there there, there is, is grace, grace available. And you even <laughs> see it in, what's it called? Um, Matthew 1 1, mm. where it gives you the, what's it Gen called? It gives the you yeah, the genealogy, the <laughs> genealogy of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually see that there was Bathsheba, mm. and she was she committed adultery mm. so it's like there's kind of, there's grace as well for someone that's a sinner to be in the line mm. of Christ that mm. was in the line of David as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I feel like. Whether you fornicated seven times, mm. no matter how many times, like there's always grace. It's true, there's always grace for you. So yeah, um, cool. So then my next question I want to ask you guys is that so I asked you about um how um our relationships like do we like run into it, yeah? So all right, cool. Let's say that someone's in a relationship right now, yeah. Do you think that based on their relationship, they're more likely to sin or like fall into temptation? Or do you feel like it just depends on a person or do you feel like if it, as soon as you enter the relationship like there's bound to be sin bound for you to sin in that relationship well sexual morality yeah sexual morality sorry I, should say. I think um it's likely mm -hmm. 
I think whether, even if you're believers, it's like, it's not just your insides that mm-hmm. are probably like, it's not just like um, your personality, mm-hmm. but it's also the looks that, or yeah. well, for me anyway, it's yeah, also the looks, looks that I would like mm-hmm. to have. And I would expect the same from her. Mm-hmm. And it's a thing where it's like, cool, those things attract me. And although like we're both fighting, um, both going on our journey in Christ, mm-hmm. it's like, how do you not expect, how do you expect not to last? Oh, okay. Yeah, if you understand me, what yeah. I mean. But I feel like, Maybe they'll, I think that there is likely that you're going to last. Um, but I feel like when it comes to a situation where you're tempted to actually mm. put the lust into action, mm. then I feel like you should both be at a place where it's like, oh, no, like, mm, yeah, that's I why I feel like from dwelling me. in lust is very damaging because mm. you don't realize how weak the flesh is. Like, mm. That's why I always say exaggerate the weakness of the flesh. Because you mm. never know how weak the flesh mm. is. Never mm. balance. Mm. Never balance. Yeah. I just got like a quick statement mm. for what you said because you said that you're likely not to like you might last, but you might not act on the lust. Mm-hmm. But then Jesus said that even if you look at yeah, a woman lustfully, true. you've committed yeah, lust without doing true. the act. So I think mean, it's a tricky one because um well human beings, we mm. have mm needs we have lust etc we have our own fleshly desires Mm. but i don't think it's inevitable Mm. um if you have the right boundaries and perimeters Mm. doesn't mean that you will now come and commit the lust you can have a godly ordained courtship and Mm. godly ordained relationships Mm. but it's just how much self-control you have and just to even add that you what you think how how much self-control you think you have Mm. you don't don't actually have have that much um so as believers, we like to think, if I was put in that situation, I, I, I know, th- yeah, like, flee from sure. temptation. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but we also need to be practical. Yeah. If you know you're going somewhere and you're going to do something, mm-hmm. just don't go there. Yeah. So set the um, parameters from the start. And I feel like it's not inevitable. But when you have parameters that are quite shaky, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, yeah, I'm allowed to do this, but we're not doing this right mm. now. When you have like shaky parameters, mm. as you go and the mm. longer you're in a relationship, mm. the parameters begin to shift. Yeah. So you need to set the standard from the get go, I think. And mm. as Paul said, flee for the temptation. Yeah. No, I think that uh, a lot of it comes from, um, what's this, what's, what is it? Uh, <laughs> confidence in the flesh, oh, that's oh, it. Okay. Confidence, confidence in the flesh. flesh. And I feel confidence in the flesh is like, let me say, uh, um, what's that verse, Galatians 2.20. Well, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Mm. So I'm thinking, wow, Christ lives in me. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. I can go into a place where there's lust. When I used to lust, mm. but I've been delivered. Mm. My flesh has been crucified. Mm. So I no longer lust. I can go into an environment where there's a lot of lust mm. because I've been delivered mm. and expect not to be tempted. Okay. I feel that's a lack of wisdom and mm. it's confidence in the flesh. It's true. That's because true. Although that you're in Christ and yeah, your, your flesh has been crucified, mm. you shouldn't be putting yourself in this situation, yeah, situation. where you, you can be tempted. It's true, yeah. true. Like every everything we do, yeah, everything we do in this world, I always say it to myself, everything you do is like war, like mm, in my head. That's everything you do. War, W-A. Huh? Uh, war. Yeah, everything uh. you do is warfare. Like, yeah, it is. Oh, warfare. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're always going to battle something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's why like, um, when you're talking about boundaries, that's really good because if you don't have the right intention into where you're going, mm. you lose the battle. Shoot, like you're shoot, gonna yeah, you're gonna shoot. fall, like so that's why you have to set the right like, the right perimeters. Cause mm. if you put yourself in a situation where that you're more you're yeah, going like, to sin, then you're going to yeah, actually sin. You have to be con- if you're in a relationship or whatever, you have to be confident enough to have that conversation to mm. let both of yourselves know that whatever nothing's gonna happen. Mm. A B C D, you know, mm. you, you have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Else, you're just gonna you're just gonna put yourself in situations that you just gonna just, goes <laughs> around place. Yeah. just goes around the place. Just around the place. Me personally, as I said, I feel like um, like we just need to fo- put our focus onto the word of God, if that makes sense. Because God says that um, He says that what uh, whatever uh, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So in other words, if you keep feeding yourself lustful things, like if you keep watching things that are lustful, if you keep indulging in things that will lead you into sin, yeah, then eventually you're gonna be you're going to sin, if that makes sense. But if you fix your mind on on the word of God and on God and Jesus, yeah. Don't like those are the things that like hold precious to you because you won't be likely to sin because even though the word of God says that flee from um youthful desires in I think in Timothy, somewhere in Timothy, yeah. Then that means that you're gonna listen to it because you want the best for you. And God also wants the best for you as well, because like God will never command something that He knows that you're not able to do. Like once he knows that you're able to do something, he then he he tells you that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I just feel like you just need to um put yourself in a situation where like 
your your full attention is with God. That like God, I'm not gonna like fall into sin. It, mm-hmm. Like even though cool, you might fall into sin, yeah, I'm still gonna rise back up because like the spirit of God is still living with me and like it's given the enablement or the power the power to overcome um temptations that are in our generation if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah. I also think so. I also think mm. that you can actually not lust as well. Okay. Even if you're in a relationship. Mm, okay. Um the reason why I say that is because Ephesians six thirteen actually talks about the armor of God. Yeah. And it makes it specific that you must wear all of the armor of God so mm. that you withstand all evil. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I have the sword being the word of God, mm-hmm. the shoes as peace. Yeah. A helmet of righteousness, is it righteous salvation. Salvation, mm-hmm. helmet of salvation. Plate. Yeah, I said that last time. I got it wrong. <laughs> but now the helmet of salvation mm. and the breastplate of um, righteousness, righteousness. Yeah. and the belt of truth. Yeah, yeah. So if you have like all of those, mm-hmm. then you will be able to withstand evil. Mm. So withstanding evil is also lust. Okay. So you'll be able to overcome any type of temptation. Mm. The reason why we fought is because probably we don't have every single one of them. Okay. On. Maybe we're missing the word of God. Mm. Remember when Jesus was tempted, mm. he used the word of God. Yeah, to defeat the devil. And yeah. what did he do? The, the difference between Jesus' temptation and Eve's temptation, mm. Eve entertained the serpent. Oh. Jesus rebuked Satan mm. straight away. Mm. 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 There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, hey, that's, that is very good, bro. That's, that's very powerful. good. That's powerful. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, um, with so the next question I want to ask you guys is that um, cool. Let all right, cool. Would you guys? Okay, how would I say this? Would you guys advise people to be in a relationship in this generation, or would you say not? Because like, if in a relationship, it's it's time consuming. You're gonna spend so much time with that person. So would you advise <laughs> a person to go into a relationship, or would you say that now nah, wait until like you've you've developed a relationship? Or do you feel like? While you're with that person, that person, you and that person can seek God together. Seek God together. You know? I've had this discussion with some of my friends. Is it? <laughs> yeah, actually. And it's an interesting one because it's, again, subjective. Mm. But I'll say in terms, it's really dependent on the person. Mm. Because in the Bible, mm. it talks about unequally yoked and equally yoked. Mm. If someone is equally yoked or if... I'm a female, so if I go with a male that's higher yoked, if that's even English, mm. um, than me, <laughs> he can bring me up as well. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't say no, mm-hmm. but I would say the one you should be cautious about is going with someone that's not equally yoked with you, like okay. the Bible says. Mm. But I think it, depend- it depends on the person. Mm. What I would say before you get in that relationship, understand your purpose mm. first. Your purpose is, is not going to be derived in the boy or the girl mm. that you're going to be in. It's going to be your purpose should be in Christ. Mm. So once you understand that, then God will bring you someone or you might find someone. Mm. And when you're in a relationship and you're courting, mm. what you're trying, the ultimate get, aim is you're trying to see, does this person and my purpose align? Okay. Um, is this person going to bring me closer to my mm. um, God's given purpose? Mm. If not, then you shouldn't be in the mm. relationship. If yes, okay, then you start, seeing okay yeah i know what our purpose is align but can i see a future with mm. him is he financially stable mm. xyz mm. whatever you want in mm. a man or a female so i think it really depends but i would just say don't get into a relationship with number one an unbeliever number okay. two someone that's unequally yoked mm. and as a female for me for all the females as well i always say to them as a female or as a wife that you're looking to be mm. The Bible tells us that we need to submit to a husband. Now, my next question is, is the boy or the male that you're with worth submitting to? If the answer is no, then why are you in the relationship? Because you know that when you're going to get married, Mm -hmm. the submission needs to come. Okay. Number two, he's meant to be the head of the household. Can he lead you? If he can't lead you, then you shouldn't be in the relationship. (laughs) You need to look at the traits of what you're looking for a wife or Mm. for a husband, because those are going to set the foundation for your relationship. Mm. So I I see a lot of people, they don't have this foundation. Then when it comes to popping the question and trying to get married, then you're trying to fix the foundation. Mm. But the foundation was scarred from when you got in the relationship. And that's why sometimes it doesn't end up working. So that's what I would say. These are like some of the questions you should personally ask, but it's to one's own discernment. Okay. Mm. One's own discernment. <laughs> like that, like that. Yeah, man, just have to study, like, look carefully. Like, all, all, all that you said was biblical. Yeah. yeah. Just looking at things that you know as a Christian and just making sure that they tick the right boxes. boxes. Yeah. You know? Like, it, like I'm, don't say, don't go and look for, like, don't put in your head to find someone perfect or mm. everyone has flaws, everyone has mistakes. It's but true. look for someone, again, with a purpose. Look for someone that, if you're a guy, mm. someone that you know that, 
when you lead the household, mm. they can support you, sure. they can guide you. Like, mm. bro, if someone's the neck and the neck cuts, the body's the, yeah, the, the rest gone. is you're dead. You yeah. Know? So don't think that you're you're the head and the, the neck is irrelevant. Mm. Everything's relevant. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so I think to even add, it just reminded me of yeah, a quote that yeah. I said. Um, what's the quote? It was like um don't look at potential, look at patterns. Mm. So we always mm. try to, maybe as a female perspective, it's always like, oh, this guy has potential though. I can change the guy. Mm. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> there is some change that as a female you can do. I'm not saying you can't, mm. but transformation and doing 180, please look at the patterns the guy has as well, because mm. the patterns is what shows mm. the person. Mm. Um, so yes, someone can have potential. Don't get me wrong. You can change, you can mold, but it also takes time. Are mm. you willing to put up with the change that mm. you want to see as well? So I would mm. also say that to that. Mm. What I'll say is, like with the body of Christ, mm. um, you need each other. So mm. it's like, uh, I think uh, Paul says in First Corinthians, he says like, I'm not really sure. Maybe he says that eyes <laughs> can't say to you, the feet, I have no need of you. Yeah. Mm. Because all of you need oh, each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And also what I'll say about the unequally yoked is like, if you're unequally yoked, it's not over. It's not like God is going to say, now that you're unequally yoked, divorce, because I want him to be with a believer. Mm. Yeah. That's not what the word of God says. First Peter 3 verse 1 actually shows that if you're unequally yoked, the person that's an unbeliever can actually become a believer, not by you telling them about Christ, not just about that, but by, by them, yeah. exactly, by them seeing the way you live mm. and the way you love, most importantly, mm. I believe, Beautiful. and the way your faith is strong. Relationship, yeah. Like, like the person that you're going to relationship is he gonna develop you as a person is he gonna basically sustain you is he gonna like help with the like the things that you go through or is he a person just to like like every time that you're going through something he's just like every like he's gonna talk about you negatively he's gonna like abuse you but i feel like when you're going to relationships, because there's some people who are in abusive relationships and the reason why they can't come out is because they've been so used to that person that they can't see themselves away from that person entanglement and, entanglement <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like with that year that you need to like, firstly, go, like analyze that person. Like, is it the right person for you? Like, does he worship God? Like, is he like, does he say who he claims to be? Because there's some people here yeah, who pretend that like they're this godly man or this godly mm. woman, but they're actually not. Mm. Like, they're they're more likely to lead you to sin. And I think that's a dangerous thing when you can't discern if this person is a godly man or a godly woman. Because once you don't discern that person here, yeah, then it's like that person is going like little by little, he's gonna like he or she's gonna basically lead you astray. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I feel like you just need to know the person that you're with. Like, is that person going to help you as a, like, as, as, <coughs> as a believer or even to develop you? Because, and also like check the person's um, char um, characteristics, um, his traits or her, his traits here, that the things that are in him, would it help you as a person? Do you mm -hmm. get what I'm trying to say? Like the things that are placed in him, like humbleness, meekness, like patience, are there things in him? Because if it's not, then once you have into an argument, like it's gonna be like there's gonna mm. be so much um, anger, I, anger, and just like so he much. He sees red. <laughs> it's, yeah, it just goes mad. So I just feel like you just need to um, know who you're with, and also examine his characteristics as well. If that makes sense. And don't ignore the red flags. Yeah, don't please so don't see them by their feet. Yeah, yeah it's true. You see, like even though they, they probably hide and pretend that there's someone, they're gonna eventually see, see the their person. Face, so yeah, um, cool. So um. I want to give, uh, can you guys basically give a word to encourage me for the people who are watching who, okay, ha, okay, who are in a relationship that, um, or okay, people who are and are not in a relationship, like what should they do? If you're in a relationship, what advice would you give to them? And if you're not in a relationship, what advice would you give to them? I will say for someone that's single, mm -hmm. continue seeking God and mm -hmm. growing in God and finding more about God and knowing who Jesus is. I feel like knowing who Jesus is allows you to have more of a relationship with him. Mm. And for those that are together, I'll say do it together. As mm. in bring Jesus not just into your individual lives, but into your lives as one mm. when so you're together. Yeah. Um, if you're single, singleness doesn't mean you're alone. Mm. I mean, there's a perception of being single means I'm depressed and alone, which is false. You can have fun in your singleness. Mm. Um, as well, like James said, um, seek God, try and find your purpose because only God can show you that and not a person. Mm. If you're together, I would say um, see how your purpose aligns, how you're feeding each other's spirits mm. and look at the traits and try and develop the traits that you want in the person to be your husband or to be your wife. Mm. Yeah, if you're single, um, again, enjoy your singleness. Not every relationship is um, 
it's just man and woman. You can have a relationship with God and mm. enjoy that relationship. Mm. Like you can have fun in that relationship, getting to know each other, like him revealing the things for your life. Mm. Like you, you guys going deeper into it. So don't, don't, don't worry that like you're single. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are in a relationship, like bring that individuality that you've got with God, bring it together. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's amazing. When you when you two come together and God reveals what He has for the pair of you. Mm. Mm. It's mind blowing. Okay, whoa, well, that's very good, guys. I really enjoyed this conversation. Well, thank you guys for joining me in the Christian podcast. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. See you guys next week. God bless. See ya. Bye. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>